Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. We are so back. Oh my god. I honestly don't have to tell you people why you're here. It's it's Prime 4. We're all here for Prime 4. It is alive and so am I. And I'm gonna dive into the video in a little bit, you know. I'm gonna dissect the trailer, explore some of our expectations. But honestly, ultimately what I wanted to do was, you know, explore the series and its evolution. Maybe touch on the very soul of Metroid Prime. Ooh. Honestly, some of the reactions to the trailer have actually been pretty interesting. I know some people complained about Samus' new design, and look, I get it. It looks like she got a hold of some Ozempic, you know? The armor is looking much thinner. I too will miss that D1 linebacker look. But personally, I'm not mad. I really do like this new design. Although one thing I will say is I do kind of miss the transparent visor. But I have to admit, she does look more intimidating with the, you know, more opaque one. Maybe this would be like uh, in Dread, where sometimes her eyes are visible at some point throughout the game. It just kind of depends. I don't know about you, but this honestly does get me excited to see how Samus will be portrayed. You know, she's always been intimidating, but in Prime 1, the armor is pretty huge. And it kind of led to some, well, interesting moments of it looking more clunky than the team would probably want. I don't know. I love it, but it is kind of goofy looking. The new look allows the team to move Samus more freely when they animate her in third person. Plus, it still looks awesome. Aside from Samus's look, one of the other things that stood out to me was the lighting. At various points throughout the trailer, such as the purple blast and the vent shot, we see the light around that kind of beam surrounds the area. Yeah, that was actually present in the original GameCube release of Prime 1, but as many people pointed out when the, first, uh, when the game first came out, it was missing in Prime 1 Remastered. It's really nice to see Retro focusing on these little details. Uh, another thing I noticed was we might have some dynamic weather systems. Rain starts after Samus lands on the planet. Honestly, the game just overall looks absolutely stunning. It looks so good, in fact, that people are starting to question if this is running on the Switch. I'm not sure why they would question it. This absolutely is running on Switch hardware. I mean, look at Luigi's Mansion th Prime Re- Look, man, if you're stupid, just say- All right, I'm a level with you. The reason why these games, you know, Luigi's Mansion 3, Prime Remaster, look very good. It's all design tricks, alright? Those games have a similar-ish design, utilizing, like, zones or different ways of loading between zones. This isn't new. Prime 1 did this back on the GameCube. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to help you if you still don't believe that this is uh, running on Switch, man. Um, there's several instances of, like, objects and debris disappearing pretty quick, almost as soon as they pop up, actually. Yep. There it is. Now, before you get mad at me for showing some of this off, I'm actually happy that this is the case, because it's clear as day it's running on the Switch, which is great. It looks amazing, you know? I'm personally not bothered by some pop-in here and there. I, I don't care. I know the game will still be immersive. I know it'll be amazing. Hopefully. At the very least, it's going to look amazing, and we kind of already knew that looking at Metroid Prime Remaster. All right, all right, all right. I'm actually getting ahead of myself. What happened in the trailer? What can we tell? I'll be honest, I'll go out on a limb and say that we couldn't really glean much from the game's story or anything just with this snippet. With, that's fine though, you know, it's a teaser. And uh, yeah, no, that answer kind of sucks. So I started digging, you know, to other sources. I put myself in the de into the development team's shoes. What would I do if I were like on the team developing Metroid Prime 4? Uh, I would look to the past, so that's what I did. I looked at what Brian Walker wanted. He was the senior producer on Prime 2 and 3. And I was a, a, a Space Galactic Federation trooper saying, stand to Samus uh, during uh, during Prime 3. Uh, that was the extent of, of how much uh, knowledge I, I threw in <laughs> from, a, from a military standpoint, uh, which I, I was uh, I was always kind of hoping to for a chance to, to do more uh, with the, the Galactic Federation in the Prime series, but uh, it, it perhaps Prime, Prime 4 will have it. And obviously, like, that's the old retro this is the new retro they could do whatever they'd like it still kind of remains to be seen if the federation that we saw in the trailer if they're more of like a set dressing
fighting. You know, we did see them fighting in the background, but is that all they'll be? Are they going to be a presence throughout the story, the game? Are we going to explore more Federation sites? That's that's very unclear right now. I think it's easy, safe to say that, especially with Silux as the main villain, that the Federation will be here in a large capacity. If we're going off of the trailer being the first hour or the intro to the game, Silex is here to steal something from the Federation. He actually did that before. His ship was actually a prototype from the Federation, so it's not outside of the realm of possibility for him. The scariest thing, though, is he's already done this before as well with the Federation Force, and we see the payoff in that trailer. He has Metroids under his control. I don't know how he would have done it, but the only thing I can infer is that he probably did what Samus would do in Metroid 2, which was kind of bond with them. There's something going on where he's like able to bond with them. They don't look outside of the ordinary, you know, they look like your typical Metroid. If I had to guess why he has control of Metroids, aside from like the clear power that they give him, is maybe he's trying to steal something within their DNA or combine them with uh, Federation technology. Who knows, maybe he's trying to free them. At the very least, he's trying to go beyond his capabilities. Regardless, it's going to be interesting to see what Silux actually does with the Metroids and the Federation and the Pirates. He has like a lot of pieces together. He's he's genuinely probably the biggest threat right now. Maybe one of the biggest threats we've ever seen. We didn't see much in the gameplay department. We know that it'll be a Metroid Prime game. As I mentioned before, the trailer is very likely taking place in the intro of the game, so we didn't get to see late gameplay. Something I did notice at one point, the arm cannon moves almost independently of the camera, similar to when you were using a Wii controller. If I had to make an educated guess, I'm going to say that they got rid of the tank controls. They're not designing around that anymore which is fine I'll miss it they're definitely keeping the dual stick control scheme and that's how the series will probably progress further if they make a Metroid Prime 5 we're gonna see the return of gyro and motion controls similar to the remaster as well as the prime trilogy on Wii which is great you know always give people more options for how they want to play I'll probably stick to the dual control scheme and eh, maybe gyro is actually fun I like it we'll, ha we'll have to see I already know what I'm going to say is going to be very contentious, but it's still up in the air if Prime 4 is going to live up to the hype. So I'd say temper your expectations. Honestly, for me, it just has to be a worthy sequel, which you could probably ask, a sequel to what game? Metroid Prime 1, 2, 3, Hunters? Me proposing that is, yeah, a, a little pretentious. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a sequel to Prime 3 and Hunters. But understand that there's quite a few differences per game, and this likely was a question that the devs had when designing, or at the very least, it was in the back of their mind. This whole thing honestly requires its own video, but it's worth bringing up here when I talk about Prime 4. How do they continue the series? When we look at the series as a whole, the heart and soul of the series, or rather, the artistic integrity, comes from a few key points. First and foremost, this series is born of its technical limitations and the brilliant minds working in spite of these limitations. It's a series that tries to make the most of its hardware. One of the questions I'm going to start asking myself, especially down the line when we get more trailers and when I actually have the game in my hands, is the soul of Metroid Prime intact? What I mean is, does Prime 4 appear to be a worthy sequel? More importantly, how are they evolving the series while maintaining its identity? And honestly, we won't know until we get the game in our damn hands. And I think there's two very valid points, especially with the release of Prime 1 Remaster. There's two perspectives that the team can take. Is this a spiritual successor to Prime 1, or is this just a sequel to Prime 3? If it's the former, they're trying to recapture that lightning in a bottle experience that we had all the way in 2002. And there's a lot of merit to go this way, you know? Go big or go home. There's also merit to the other perspective. Let's just make a sequel to Prime 3, you know? Let's keep it safe, let's just give them the Prime experience, let's do what we did a little bit before. The only issue is that if they lean too hard into it, it'll be slightly disappointing. It'll still be great, because Metroid Prime 2 and 3 were great. The only thing is, is that Metroid Prime 3 was more of a shooter than it was a first-person adventure game. The main point I'm trying to make, though, is 
For this to work, they have to understand Metroid Prime. Not the game, the series. I've been saying this for years, the core identity of Metroid Prime is a first-person action adventure. It has shooter elements, and some of the games, like Prime 3, leaned more into it being a shooter, but combat is better described, at least in my opinion, as a bullet hell with puzzle solving, similar to like Zelda. You find power-ups, you avoid the damage, and you use these power-ups to strategically fight against the bosses or navigate the area. But what truly sets Metroid Prime apart from the rest of its competitors is the world building. The environment itself tells a story without the scan logs. Scanning provides more detail and more inferences. It's still absolutely in the player's hands to come to these conclusions. I know a lot of people say this about a lot of games, and they're right to some extent, you know? And I'm gonna say it here too, there's nothing like Metroid Prime, especially Metroid Prime 1. Stop looking at Super Metroid. The somber moments, the creatures that are around you, they feel real. Prime 1, for example, I feel like I am actually treading on a real ecosystem. If we look at Metroid Prime 1, more importantly, Fendrana Drifts, this is a pinnacle in level design. And it's the perfect example of what I'm talking about. There's not much explicitly stated. You know, you could go off the scan logs, but if you just look at the level, it still tells its own story. It's up to the player's interpretation, you know? The rest of the planet's not frozen over, it's not a frozen hellscape. There are these new creatures that don't feel like they were there. They feel like they evolved, specifically, or like they were just encroaching on a new climate. It's amazing. It's somber, it's quiet, it's desolate, it's beautiful, it's everything. And everyone seems to unanimously agree that that final shot of Metroid Prime 4's trailer really screams Fendrana Drifts. I'm keeping my hopes up, but I'm keeping them tempered. Hopefully they lean more in Metroid Prime 4 being a sequel to obviously the story of Prime 3 and Hunters, but a spiritual successor to Prime 1. Now, I'm curious to hear from you. What do you think? What are your thoughts on this trailer? What are your thoughts on the series? Do you think I'm crazy for saying it's not a shooter? Do let me know, and uh, I'll see you next mission.